Hi guys, it is another gorgeous but windy day here in paradise in the end times. Again, I hope this wind doesn't conflict with this rant too much, but it is a beautiful Sunday. That would be Sunday, December 20th, 2015 here in the rainforest of St. Croix Virgin Islands, and I'm here to bring you my first doomsday sermon from uh, St. Croix this season, and today I have cho chosen for our reading pleasure a 15-year-old book, which I started in the Puerto Rico airport called Fast Food Nation, Fast Food Nation by Doomsday Prophet journalist Eric Schlosser. Fast Food Nation, the dark side of the all-American meal. So, this is now 15 years old, just now getting around to reading it. Uh, fast food has hastened the mauling of our landscape, widened the chasm between rich and poor, fueled an epidemic of obesity, and propelled American cultural imperialism abroad. And there you go. That's a lengthy list of charges, but Eric Schlosser makes them stick with an artful mix of first-rate reportage, wry wit, and careful reasoning. Yes, uh, anywho, guys, I could dive into this book pretty much anywhere. And just for full disclosure here, as you may or may not know, I do not eat beef. Do not eat beef, which is uh, the subject of about 90% of the tirade of this article. <clears throat> I do, however, continue to eat fast food chicken and pork. So just so you know, and despite all of these promises uh, by, by all of these reviewers that after reading this book, you would never eat at a fast food restaurant again, I have to admit, now that I'm about finished with the book, the book makes me hungry more than anything, although it doesn't make me hungry for beef. And so this chapter from chapter 9, What's in the Meat? I'm just going to dive into this book uh, and read from chapter 9 and see if you will buy a McDonald's hamburger after reading this or any other hamburger. What's in the Meat? Every day in the United States, roughly 200,000 people are sickened by a foodborne disease, 900 are hospitalized, and 14 die. According to the CDC, more than a quarter of the American population suffers a bout of food poisoning each year. And most of these cases are never reported to authorities or properly diagnosed and the widespread outbreaks that are detected and identified represent a small fraction of the number that actually occurs. And there is strong evidence not only that the incidence of food-related illness has risen in the past few decades, but also that the lasting health consequences of such illnesses are far more serious than was previously believed. And the acute phase of food poisoning, that initial few days of diarrhea and gastrointestinal upset, in many cases may simply be the most obvious manifestation of an infectious disease. As recent studies have found that many foodborne, foodborne pathogens can precipitate long-term ailments such as heart disease, inflammatory bowel disease, neurological problems, autoimmune disorders, and kidney damage. Although the rise in foodborne illnesses has been caused by many complex factors, much of the increase can be attributed to recent changes in how American food 
is produced. Robert talks a head of the foodborne and diarrheal disease branch of the CDC believes that entirely new kinds of outbreaks of foodborne illnesses are now occurring since all of these changes in the meat packing industry. A generation ago, the typical outbreak of food poisoning involved a church supper, a family picnic, a wedding reception, or improper food handling or storage would cause a small group of people in one local area to get sick. Such traditional outbreaks still take place, but the nation's industrialized and centralized system of food processing has now created a whole new sort of outbreak, one that can potentially sicken millions of people. Today, a cluster of illnesses in one small town may stem from bad potato salad at a school barbecue or it may be the first sign of an outbreak that extends statewide, nationwide, or even overseas. And much like the human uh, HIV responsible for causing AIDS, the E. coli O150H, O157H7 bacterium is a newly emerged pathogen, now 15 years old, whose spread has been facilitated by recent social and technological changes. And guys, I'm not going to repeat this goddamn O157H7. I'm just going to call it E. coli. It is one of thousands of kinds of E. coli, but I'm just going to call it E. coli for the rest of this, ser uh, this sermon. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's likely this this brand of E. coli has been around, well, 15 years ago, he was saying 30 or 40 years ago, but the rise of these huge new feedlots, these CAFOs, these feedlots, slaughterhouses, and hamburger grinders, seems to have provided the means for this pathogen to become widely dispersed in our nation's food supply. American meat production has never before been so centralized. 13, 13 large packing houses now slaughter most of the beef consumed in the U.S. The meat packing system that arose to supply the nation's fast food chains, an industry molded to serve their needs to provide massive amounts of uniform ground beef so that all of McDonald's hamburgers would taste the same has proved to be an extremely efficient system for spreading disease. And it's not just this one brand of E. coli. They, they list all these others that are enjoying the free ride provided by uh, the, this new uh, industrialized meat packing, which has been uh, a direct result of the rise of the fast food industry. Uh, while medical researchers have gained important insights into the links between modern food processing and the spread of dangerous diseases, the nation's leading agribusiness firms have resolutely opposed any further regulation of their food safety practices. <clears throat> For years, the large meat packing companies have managed to avoid the sort of liability routinely imposed on the manufacturers of most consumer products. Today, the U.S. government can demand the nationwide recall of defective softball bat sneaker stuffed animals and foam rubber toy cows, but it cannot order a meat packing company to remove contaminated, potentially lethal ground beef from fast food kitchens and supermarket shelves. The un -pow the unusual power of the large meat packing firms has been sustained 
by their close ties and sizable donations to mostly Republican members of Congress. It has also been made possible by a widespread lack of awareness about how many Americans suffer from food poisoning every year and how these illnesses actually spread. The newly recognized foodborne pathogens tend to be carried and shed by apparently healthy animals. Food tainted by these organisms has mostly likely, most likely come in contact with an infected animal's stomach contents or manure during slaughter or subsequent processing. Oh, and then they break all this down. Uh, Jesus, uh, all of these uh, diseases and what percentage of ground beef has turned up with this shit. And one USDA study, 78.6% of the ground beef heading towards uh, these fast food joints contained microbes that are spread primarily by fecal material. The medical literature on the causes of food poisoning is full of euphemisms and dry scientific terms. Behind them lies a simple explanation for why eating a hamburger can now make you seriously ill. There is shit in the meat. And uh, then they, they move from that to a, a, a brief discussion of the rise of the hamburger. And uh, during the 1950s, the rise of drive-ins and fast food restaurants in Southern California helped turn the once lowly hamburger into America's national ditch. Ditch, yes, right. National dish. Uh, McDonald's CEO Ray Kroc's decision to promote Dick McDonald's as a restaurant change for families had a profound impact on the nation's eating habits. Hamburgers seemed an ideal food for small children, convenient, inexpensive, handheld, and easy to chew. And uh, I didn't realize this, before World War II, pork had been the most popular meat in the United States. But rising incomes, falling cattle prices, the growth of the fast food industry, and the mass appeal of the hamburger later pushed American consumption of beef higher than that of pork. And by the early 1990s, beef production was responsible for almost half of the employment in American agriculture. The average American ate three hamburgers a week, and I was one of those average Americans. More than two-thirds of those hamburgers were bought at fast food restaurants and children between the ages of 7 and 13 ate more hamburgers than anyone else. And then they talk about the jack-in-the-box uh, E. coli outbreak. In the eight years since the jack-in-the-box outbreak, approximately half a million Americans, the majority of them children, have been made ill by E. coli. Thousands of them have been hospitalized and hundreds have died. And this is uh, for people wanting to know what it, what it feels like for a child to die from eating a nasty hamburger. Okay, this is Nancy Donnelly's six-year-old son, Alex, was infected uh, with the bug in July 93 after eating a tainted hamburger. His Illness began with abdominal cramps that seemed as severe as labor pains. It progressed to diarrhea that filled a hospital toilet with blood. Doctors frantically tried to save Alex's life, drilling holes in his skull to relieve pressure, inserting tubes in his chest to keep him breathing, 
as the toxins destroyed internal organisms. Alex's mother stood and watched helplessly as he called out for her terrified and in pain. He became ill on a Tuesday night and was dead by Sunday afternoon. Toward the end, Alex suffered hallucinations and dementia, no longer recognizing his mother or father. Portions of his brain had been liquefied. Yes. And uh, efforts to eradicate E. coli have been complicated by the fact that it is an extraordinarily hardy microbe that is easy to transmit. It is resistant to acid, salt, and chlorine. It can live in fresh water or seawater. It can live on kitchen countertops for days, in moist environments for weeks. It can withstand freezing. It can survive heat up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And a tiny uncooked particle of hamburger meat can contain enough of the pathogen to kill you. And some herds of American cattle may have been infected with E. coli decades, decades ago, but the recent changes in how cattle are raised, slaughtered, and processed have created an ideal means for the pathogen to spread. The problem begins in today's vast feedlots. A government health official who preferred not to be named compared the sanitary conditions in a modern feedlot to those in a crowded European city during the Middle Ages when people dumped their chamber pots out the window, raw sewage ran in the streets, and epidemics raged. The cattle now packed into feedlots get little exercise and live amid pools of manure. And far from their natural habitat, the cattle in feedlots become more prone to all sorts of illnesses. And what they are being fed often contributes to the spread of disease. And I'm not even going to talk about what they used to be fed. This is after they cracked down uh, on mad cow disease. Since, since the new regulations. Uh, nevertheless, uh, current FDA regulations still allow dead pigs and dead horses to be rendered into cattle feed along with dead poultry. The regulations not only allow cattle to be fed dead poultry, they allow poultry to be fed dead cattle. Uh, Jesus. And the waste products from poultry plants, including the sawdust and old newspapers used as litter, are being fed to cattle uh, to the tune of three million pounds of chicken shit per year being fed to cattle. Uh, this chicken shit full of itself full of Giardia, antibiotic residues, arsenic, and heavy metals. And the pathogens from infected cattle are spread not only in the feedlots, but also at slaughterhouses and hamburger grinders. Jesus, it goes on and on. Uh, The odds of widespread contamination are raised exponentially when the meat, mainly the beef, is processed into ground beef, meaning hamburger meat. Uh, today, large slaughterhouses and grinders dominate the nationwide production of ground beef. One modern processing plant can produce 800,000 pounds of hamburger a day, meat that will be shipped throughout the United States. 
to make matters worse, the animals used to make about one quarter of the nation's ground beef, worn out dairy cattle are the animals most likely to be diseased and riddled with antibiotic residues. McDonald's relies heavily on dairy cattle for its hamburger supplies since the animals are relatively inexpensive and enable the chain to boast that all its beef is raised in the United States. Yes, uh, like the multiple sex partners that help spread the AIDS epidemic, the huge admixture of animals in most American ground beef plants has played a crucial role in spreading E. coli. One single fast food hamburger now contains meat from dozens or even hundreds of different cattle. And you can take a wild uh, guess what the meat packing industry's response to all this is, is the industry has repeatedly denied that problems exist, impugned the motives of its critics, fought vehemently against federal oversight, sought to avoid any responsibility for outbreaks of food poisoning and worked hard to shift the focus to shift the cost of food safety efforts onto the general public the the industry strategy has been driven by a profound antipathy to any government regulation that might lower profits there Yes, 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 that goes on. They break all this down, but there's a lot more I wanted to get to here. Then they start talking uh, all about all of these recalls that the meat industry uh, fought. But uh, then he goes where if that even if they cleaned all of that up, if, if, if it was totally spotless when it arrived to these thousands and thousands of fast uh, food outlets, you still have the employees, the, these wage slaves, these teenage and migrant uh, wage slaves, these low-skilled, uneducated employees, uh, the monkeys running the zoo, you know? So, uh, where, uh, where, then you have the next phase of, uh, yes, uh, which is the low paid, unskilled workforce composed of teenagers and recent immigrants that may not always be familiar with proper food handling procedures. And then they break down some of the horror, these horror stories. Um, the, the, this is just, just employees that he was interviewing, that, uh, the author was interviewing, uh, talking about all of this shit and laughing about it. This is several employees, uh, at the same McDonald's restaurant in Colorado Springs, independently provided details about a cockroach infestation in the milkshake machine and about armies of mice that urinated and defecated on hamburger rolls left out to fall in the kitchen every night. So, there you go. But if you think uh, the way to avoid all of this, literally avoid all of this shit, is don't eat at fast food joints, and to bring your ground beef and your chicken and everything else home with you. And I'm going to close this rant with this paragraph. Uh, and go out and, and find something to eat. Anyone who brings raw ground beef into his or her kitchen today must regard it as a potential biohazard. One that may carry an extremely dangerous microbe, infectious at an extremely low dose. The current high levels of ground beef contamination, combined with the even higher levels of poultry contamination, have led to some bizarre findings. 
a series of tests conducted by Charles Gerba, a microbiologist at the University of Arizona, discovered far more fecal bacteria in the average American kitchen sink than on the average American toilet seat. According to Gerba, quote, you had better, you would be better off eating a carrot stick that fell into your toilet than one that fell in your sink. So there you go. So any of you uh, eating carrot sticks out of your sink. Guys, it's amazing that any one of us is still alive. Uh, but all of this talk about burgers and chickens and tacos and sausage is making me hungry here in the end times. And I got to go find something to munch on and then head down to the beach for my... Uh, daily rum and pineapple for this uh, doomsday sermon fast food nation Eric Schlosser I highly suggest you read this if nothing else fun book about how the global corporatocracy is so concerned for your health bye guys